Hi, welcome back to Finally Revealed. This is part two. In this episode, we'll cover the critical infrastructure sectors that have been identified by the United States government as continuing forward. The 13 sectors were identified by a March 13, 2020 memorandum issued by the United States Department of Homeland Security, Cybersecurity, and Infrastructure Security Agency. In that it identified the 13 different sectors, I did a video, uh, video number one tells you what those 16 sectors are. This memorandum is what came out that was used by the state and local governments to identify where they could make different rules that affect people moving around and going to work, if you wonder, wonder where that came from. This is how they were selected. As I explained in video number one, the 16 different sectors, while they have standalone importance, some of them support other sectors that really need to keep going. And so um, that's how it all fits together. In this memorandum, they parcel it out and then they sent a directive to each of the uh, groups or industries that are affected and are included in these different sectors and then they further disseminated the information to the people that it impacts and so I'm going to go through the different areas that they describe in this March 2020 memo from uh, Department of Homeland Security then I'm going to go through one that applies to me um, that further identifies it and then if you look at your own individual state or local government if they have made any restrictions on you, you'll hopefully understand how that came about. And this, there is some sort of rationale for it, and this is where it comes from. So the memorandum was issued March 19, 2020, and they quote the guideline. Uh, the president issued a guidance for America and this work in a critical infrastructure industry as defined by the Department of Homeland Security such as healthcare services and pharmaceutical and food supply, you have a special responsibility to maintain your normal work schedule. So if you see people going to work, this is why, if there has otherwise been a stay at home order put in place. So they go through this and this is specifically advisory. It says it is not, nor should it be considered a federal directive or a standard in and of itself. This was as guidance based upon the 16 critical areas and critical sectors that are needed to function for the country. So they call it guidance and it was um, issued and they talk about what the importance of the critical infrastructure workers are and this specifically identifies the workers and which workers. So they have considerations for government and business. They identify the essential uh, functions that are needed and then they go forward on what those are. So the 13 that were identified to keep going during this particular situation are chemical sector, communication sector, critical manufacturing sector, dams sector, defense industrial base sector, ener emergency services, energy, financial services, food and agriculture, governmental facility, healthcare and public health, information technology, nuclear re reactors and hazardous waste, transportation, and water and wastewater. So basically all the ones that they left out, they left out the category of government facilities, but they have directives for the people that run those, so that's kind of still in. But the one that was left out that you all are aware of is commercial facilities, entertainment, places where you group, sporting activities, um, gaming, lodging, restaurants, all of those that's in the commercial sector. And most recently it carried over into re some retail operations in certain areas. Again, these are guidelines that then your local people looked at for how it applies to your community. You might not have nuclear waste so it wouldn't apply but you have health workers and you have energy and you have communication so this is where they come through to pick and choose what is going to apply and this is why the rules are different and or the guidelines are different in different places 
So I want to go through a couple of the things. One thing in addition to identifying these 13 sectors, they also did kind of a catch-all and they go into detail on energy, they go into detail on food and agriculture, they go into detail on health, they go into detail on transportation and communications. They add in a, a section called public works to further define uh, what workers are impacted and so these kind of there isn't a public works category in the critical infrastructure sectors but this just goes to employees so it gives a little bit more guidance so I'm gonna read a little bit of this those who oversee bridges sewer main breaks fleet maintenance services construction or strategic infrastructure, traffic signs and signals, and emergency location services for buried utilities. That kind of makes sense. Then they talk about plumbers, electricians, exterminators, and other service providers who, are, who provide service to maintain the safety and security of the people, and sanitation for essential operation of residences. Next, they have those who do road and line clearing to ensure the availability of needed facilities and access to them, such as transportation, energy, and medical. And then finally, they have those who remove storage and disposal of commercial and solid waste and hazardous waste. So I think those kind of are self-explanatory. Community-based, then they have a section on other community-based governmental operations and essential functions. Those to keep the buildings open and functioning. Security staff for access. Election personnel, we have primary elections coming up. Trade officials, negotiators, and national data flow administrators. Weather forecasters. Workers that maintain digital systems and other critical governmental functions, workers at operations centers, workers who support credentialing and licensing and vetting for transportation workers, customs workers necessary for supply chain, and educators for K through 12 and higher education if, if they are adhering to social distancing. Within those guidelines, those people can continue to work under these directives and hotel workers to the extent that a hotel might be used for isolation of any patients. Different sections and then for example I have this at March 22nd the Department of the Treasury issued one a memo for financial services sector and this is what they provide. They identify that this is a sector identified the memo provides that this financial services is one of the 16 critical infrastructure sectors that is to keep operating at, when it's designated and it was designated in the March 19, 2020 memo. And so then that sector by the Department of the Treasury overseeing the banks and financial related financial services puts out a memo to the participants in those industries and to put, take care of these guidelines in your local state and municipal rules some of these ordinances and proclamations and declarations that have been made they don't go into the detail and so when they just say financial services or this or that or insurance or something it's relating back to these so for for these groups of people this is what this is where they're relating back to which is the memo from the department of the treasury and it says if you work, it, it recites the president's statements. If you work in a critical infrastructure sector as defined by the Department of Homeland Security, you have a special responsibility to maintain your normal work schedule. And then it goes through and identifies what the workers are and the industries that are covered. And then the businesses uh, that, that respond to this, then they go through and call their staff appropriately so that they are in compliance so that if a need is there, it is handled. 
and I'm going to read this. It says, the essential critical infrastructure workforce for the financial services sector includes workers who are needed to process and maintain systems for processing financial transactions and services such as payment, clearing and settlement services, wholesale funding, insurance services, and capital markets activities. To provide consumer access to banking and lending services, including ATMs, movement of currency, such as armored cash carriers, support financial operations, such as those staffing data and security centers, and key third-party providers who deliver core services. These individuals are critical to maintaining safe and efficient financial services and ensuring citizens have access to these services that are necessary to conduct their daily lives. Companies aligned in the essential critical infrastructure worker definition are expected to maintain their operations and work schedules. Everyone should follow guidance from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention as well as state and local officials regarding strategies to limit disease spread. We're dedicated to working closely with all of you to ensure the safety of the workforce and ensure the continued operations of the financial services sector in support of our nation's economy. And within these groups are lawyers, insurance people, the security people, the IT people, and such that support all of these different functions. So that's just one example. So as I said in the first video, which identifies the diff 16 different sectors that are used at all times, they have identified 13 that apply to this present situation that need to have operations continue with regard to particular functions. Functions are laid out in the March 19 memo. You can find that online if you want to read about the individual sectors. But this was just to give you an idea where these local rules come from. And if you look at some of the local rules, you'll see that certain segments are listed. Uh, for example, insurance, you, know, you might say, why would insurance still be open? Well, because you might have a claim because they're related to financial services. And if you have something going on, you can't wait for a flood in your apartment until this all is over. So hopefully you understand that. And during the, the worker sections and the waste and those types of things are geared to people that are staying home so that your services continue. If you need to call a plumber, you can, an electrician and such as that. So I hope this was helpful. If it was, give me a thumbs up. Leave any comments or questions below. Hope everybody's doing well. Share this with someone who it might benefit who's asked some questions and subscribe to see our other videos. Come back and see me next time. Thanks for watching.